Astrobot First Impressions, let's go. I'm late as shit. I know. The game came out on September 6th. Ain't no time like the present, though, baby. I got like three and a half hours played on here or something like that. I just want to say this real quick. The game is about 10 hours long. Uh, achievement, Trophy Hunters. You can do all this in about 15 hours in one playthrough. You can revisit every single planet, every single level, and you can do everything after you've beaten the game to go back and do your trophy cleanup in case you missed some shit. Which is a plus, because I've been playing some long ass games lately and I don't have another 100 hours to invest in the game now. 10 hours might be too short for some people. If you're one of those people, I understand. But for other people like me, I play so many long games that I do need to offset some of those with a shorter game where I could just get that little eight to 12 hours that we used to get, have fun and get off and get to the next one. This will do that for you. This is on the level of Nintendo's level design and platform. Nintendo has been S tier with their level design and how unique they are forever, okay? Astro Bot, because keep in mind, this studio, they've only really done Astro things. They have Astro's Playroom, then they have uh, two other Playroom games, and then there's a game called Astro's uh, Astro Bot Rescue Mission. So this is what they do. But with this, they reached into a whole nother bag. So game opens up, very simple, just like your Nintendo games. The, the characters don't really talk or anything like that, but you basically see your ship gets destroyed and your friends are lost. So you need to recover, repair your ship, find your friends. That's all I'm gonna tell you. This opening sequence will remind you of the same way that Nintendo opens up with their games, especially like the Monkey Kong, the Monkey Kong, <laughs> the Monkey, Donkey Kong games, stuff like that. They get you right into the opening and they throw you right into the game, you get a little mini tutorial, something really simple, and then you go right in. The graphics on the game are very good this is only on ps5 now i don't know if that's because they only wanted to use the haptic feedback controller um and take advantage of that or if graphically uh this is all that the game could run on because we are in a generation where half the damn generation has been games that are available last gen so a lot of people feel like that they've been duped into getting new consoles so this game is only on ps5 which could be a plus for some people because i know some people are like yo i need games that are next gen only so getting back to this the graphics look really really good really clean really colorful and the other thing is when we play games even if you're playing multiplayer sometimes you might buy skins and cool animations and stuff to keep things fresh even though it might not change how the game is fundamentally played you need things to be fresh and look different on here there's about i think 50 or so planets and each planet yeah, there's five or six galaxies. Each galaxy has a certain number of planets. You go to there, do the platformer for the level, you get off. The thing is, every one of these planets is different. They don't feel the same, they don't look the same. They have different mechanics within those. I'll get to the mechanics in just a second. The music is amazing as well. And uh, you don't really feel like you've visited the same place twice. Also, some of the worlds you go to will remind you of other video games that you've played, which is a good thing. It's always a good thing when developers seem to be gamers themselves or fans of other games, because I think that's when we get some of the best of what they have to offer. So graphically, there's not much to say. Game looks really clean, really neat, really colorful, um, vibrant, uh, you know, um, and yeah. So the music, f fantastic. This is one of those games where like, it's just so good. You'd be like, man, I got to download this shit. You know what I mean? Like, you, I got to download the, the OST. I did it with Black Myth. I'm listening to the slides, like, per, uh, Persona, Skyrim, which I've never played Skyrim, but I I have the soundtrack downloaded. Um, Yakuza, Judgment. There's a, a ton of games we can name. Great soundtracks. This is one of those. And um, I'm going to tie up some stuff about the, the, the worlds, the soundtrack, in the gameplay here at the end. So stick by for that because that is, in my opinion, what I'm gonna tell you there is gonna be the best and most exciting part of the game and of this first impressions. Now, um, gameplay, it's your standard platformer. Um, there's not anything on here that is going to blow you away as far as like new mechanics, but what they do is what they do, they nail. They did a great job with what they actually did which is good. Sometimes some games get too far out of their comfort zone and they do a shit job and they spend less time doing what they're good at. 
That did not happen on here. Um, you know, even like the simple mechanic. Uh, you know, we play a lot of platformers. You jump and you land on the enemies to kill them, but some of the enemies have spikes on their head, so you can't. So in this game, you can still jump on the enemies, but they have, you know, when you jump in the air, he has a laser under his body, so you can just jump over people and you can get them that way. Um, and uh, I, I do need to mention that this game is super chill. So if you're like, you know, some days you're really into multiplayer, getting on there and being competitive. And then there's other days where you just don't want to deal with that. You had a long day at school, a long day at work. You got snot-nosed kids bothering you. You just want to chill, play something super relaxed, maybe a turn-based game where you ain't got to really focus too much or something like this. This is one of those games that'll be perfect for you because there are varying levels of difficulty because there are optional levels that are, that are harder than the base mainline game. So if you don't want to play those and be frustrated, you don't have to. But if you're a trophy hunter, you will have to play those. But it's not its not outrageously hard, though, at least so far. My opinion can change when the full review comes out after we beat the game. So do keep that in mind. So let's get back to the gameplay. Go to the world. And the way that each place is structured is you go to the world. And then remember I told you your ship is destroyed and your friends are missing. So each world, you're going to find your friends. And by the time you get to the end of that galaxy, you'll find a piece to repair your ship. Here's the thing, though. You're like, oh, what's so exciting about finding a bunch of robots? Well, first of all, the way they put the robots scattered around the world is kind of funny because there's going to be some that are like right in plain sight and you'll see them. But then there's other ones that are hidden in pretty cool spots that you're going to miss. Or you might even look right at it and then not even see the fact that there's a robot sitting there. So... If you're one of those people that like to find collectibles, um, this will be fun. Plus, some games you do collectibles for nothing. This game, the people you rescue are helpful to you, and I'll explain that why in just a second. So, you go through the level, you find a robot. Here's the cool thing, though. Number one, there's only like six, five, six, or seven on each map, each mission. Um, they're really easy to find. If you forget one, you can go back, and I will tell you, if you miss a robot or a galaxy piece, go back into the level, find whatever you're looking for, and then you could just quit out and it'll still count. You don't have to play, you don't have to beat the whole level again. That's a W. Now, the cool thing is there's robots everywhere. However, what got me hype is I went to one of the planets. Some of the, like you'll see if you pause the game, how many robots are on that, on that planet but there's a little PlayStation symbol on some of them. Those ones are the cool ones. Why are they cool? Because you're gonna run into a whole bunch of video game characters from your childhood and from recent years that you recognize because they are like in the game and they're, they're in robot form. So there's a couple people that I didn't even realize were the characters I thought because they're in robot form and I just, it just, I just was not tying it together like that. It's really cool when you're playing a game. Cause I had no idea the game was like that. I'm doing a simple level. I get on there. I got to rescue somebody. I see who it is and I'm yelling this shit because I wasn't expecting to see dude on there. On top of that, they're not just there for you to collect and that's it. You have a planet that you're stranded on that you can't get off of until you repair your ship. Everybody that you rescue helps run the community and they help you do the objectives on there so that you can find everything you need. And you will actively see these robots walking and flying around the planet that you're stranded on, just in your like your little community area. And they will help you. So let's say there's a really heavy object that you need to pick up so that you can get more puzzle pieces or something. It'll say that you need 10 friends. As long as you rescue 10 friends, you can do it. You stand on it. All your friends that I'm talking about, they will come run over there. You will physically see them run over. And some of those guys that you rescued that look like video game, video game characters you recognize will help you lift the shit up. Shit's just cool. Um, and that is really amazing. But that's for super nerds. And you probably are too. Uh, but I really enjoyed that. It really reminded me, I know I'm probably say this when I do the review later. When I played Sonic Adventure 1 on Dreamcast back in the day, you had these little chow babies. You didn't have to ever really do anything with a child baby, but you can go back to the little hub and, and raise a little child baby. It just reminds me of how I felt when I did that. Now, let's fast forward back through the gameplay a little bit. Let me talk about some of the mechanics. Uh, so the cool thing is there's different 
abilities that you have and that you'll find that you need to get through the level. Um, boxing gloves to help punch objects, walls, enemies on one level. You might find out. You might find another level where you're a rat, where you can turn into a rat. That's your rat power. And when you turn into a rat, you get really small. You can enter small spaces. You can find friends that are there. You can find cheese and all that other stuff. And then you can, you can go back normal, big size, whenever you want. You get so small that you can walk across the clothesline or go under covers, or you can go into an air vent. So you can change your size and stuff, whatever. So they have little cool mechanics. There's one, I think, where you're a monkey, you have really long arms, you can swing on stuff. So they keep things fresh mechanically and just gameplay wise. So when everywhere you go, the music's different and the scenery's different, then you, you, know, you kind of never get bored at looking at the same stuff. So that is really cool as far as the mechanics go. Now here's, here's, the, here's the big seller, all right? Cause we're gonna wrap this up here in a minute. For people that's into nostalgia, this is one of your games. I mean, hell, when you load up the goddamn game and you pick your save spot, the save spots are memory cards for PS2 or PS1. Your ship that gets destroyed is a PS5 and you need to find PS5 pieces to fix it. Um, the coolest thing about this game, the shit that got me hyped, number one was finding video game characters in, ro in uh, Astro Robot form. Number two, you you fight a boss. The bosses are really well made. They're fun. If you think about how Nintendo does their bosses on, say, a game like Splatoon, it's like that. Really well made, really cool, not frustrating. They're very, 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 very generous with checkpoints. I did not say that. So if you're one of those people, you play platformers, you get frustrated because you you get past a really hard part, you die, and now you're two minutes behind. And you 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 don't even know how you pass it that, that time. You feel like you're never going to be able to do it again. You don't have to worry about that on here. They are very generous with checkpoints on here. And when you get to boss fights... Um, you get like two or three extra hits before you, uh, you know, have to start to fight over. <clears throat> now, once you beat these bosses, you're going to rescue one of our little special friends from another video game. And then the fire shit is that it's going to open up an optional level that is completely themed and tied in with Astro Bot. So you'll get there. Number one, the objectives will be a little bit different than what you've been doing because they're going to be more so related to the game of the character that you found. So you'll get there. And not only that, your Astro robot that you're controlling will start looking like that character or wearing their clothes. So they'll have different skins on or whatever related to the theme of that particular world. So you'll get there. The music will be, even in some cases, cause I've only done two of these, I'm only on the second galaxy. In some cases, they're gonna take the music from the original OG games that I'm talking about and they're gonna have Astro World themed versions of it. And the shit just tied all together is amazing. But one of these levels, I was so goddamn hyped. Um, if you go to my episode two of my, my walkthrough, you'll see it. I wasn't expecting that at all to bump into that guy. And then to be able to basically be him and go through his world and it looks just like it. And they they have, they like the little things that that OG game has, they've like, put thought into that and that does not go unnoticed. I see it, it's amazing. And those optional levels for people who want a little bit of skill or a little challenge, like I said, you can do those, some of those, and they're really short too. Those optional levels you can beat in like 90 seconds, 60 seconds. It's just like the way they're laid out. Um, there's a little bit of, of a challenge there. Other than that, the game is fun, chill, man. And Astro Bot is a W. Do not let this game fly under the radar for too much. Even if you wait for a price drop or something like that, I do think you should play this game. If you're into platformers, if you hate platformers, I would not tell you, but if you do, you're doing yourself a disservice by not playing that. If you have, you know what I mean? $60 laying around and you're looking for what to play. You want a short game. I think Astro Bot is it. This game is people calling it a masterpiece. We're going to find out when I do my full review at the end, but I say this is a definite purchase. $60, not 70. Until next time, appreciate y'all. Thanks for listening. Comment below. Let me know what you think of this first impressions and if you want me to keep this going for the next one. I'm also considering Elden Ring, Black Myth Wukong, NCAA College Football, 10 things I hate for each one of those or five things I hate. It'll be basically like reviews. Until next time, thumbs up. Follow me on all the shits. Um, bye.